people that send me uh, stuff all the time. Um, um, well, not all the time. O only a few people, actually. There's uh, Nelson in Atlanta, Georgia. But then here in South Africa, uh, Shepi Mati, who's a he used to be a student activist. He used to be, I guess, he's still, he really is an activist, student activist during the bad old days of apartheid. He's very, he's very well famous, not in the circles you would know, but he's, he's, he's very well famous. And I met Shepard because we used to work together at a place called Adasa. Anyway, so he sent me this uh, thing. And uh, now Shepard, I should say, I find myself always attracted to um, what we call uh, archivists. I'm, I'm actually, in, in essence, I'm, uh, I'm an audio dramatist, but, but my, my, I've done a lot of archiving, uh, uh, taping forums and stuff like that. Uh, that's why he's used to it. That's a, but Sheppy, every he he records everything. He's always with his camera, you know. He's always recording or, or, or audio recording. He's always recording everything. He's he's man. Some university needs to support this brother. I guess well he he works through, he works at Rhodes, so I guess right, in the communications department. So I guess he does. Anyway, uh, he sent me this thing from uh, what is this? A uh, uh, site called How Africa. Um, it's just How Africa. I've never heard of it. The Rise of Africa is the name of the site. I'm looking at their logo, but they don't have Madagascar in there. I don't like places that use uh, Africa logo, but they never have, they don't have Madagascar. So, but let's go to the content. Um, this is the thing called before his assassination in 1961. Here's Patrice Lumumba's most revealing uh, letter written. Okay, now I know about, well, I've, I've always known about Patrice Lumumba as far as I am. I can remember, uh, but one of the things I used to uh, archive, I used to record these forums in the states. One of the one of the a couple of times there was a guy named John Stockwell, uh, and he uh, uh, and he is the one that had Patrice Lumumba's body in the boot of his car. You know those old Mercedes. He he's a C, he's ex CIA, well he was CIA at the time, and he's the one who carried around Patrice Lumumba's body after they you know killed him in the boot of his car. Uh, that's that's the story. I mean, and and it's, it's well documented. Look it up, uh, on John Stockwell, and uh, he and I record him several times recounting that story. Anyway, so let's get to what this this artist this letter says. Congolese politician and first. And well, he's actually the first Prime Minister of the Independent Democratic Republic of Congo, Patrice Emery Lumumba, was assassinated on this day, 1961, at the age of 36. Uh, this this day, when is this thing written? Uh, I should have looked that up. Uh, oh, it was really soon. It was fairly, well, 1961. Well, we'll keep on reading. Today marks uh, 57 years after his death, which was felt all over Africa and the world, as he was filmed in captivity and manhandled by soldiers under the authority of his chief of staff, Joseph Desire, uh, I don't know if you say Desiree Desire, uh, I guess Joseph Desire uh, Mobutu, who, uh, you know, Mobutu, who had uh, taken over the country after a coup d'etat. The United States. United Nations and former colony Belgium were complicit in his murder and they looked on while he was tortured uh, despite letters he wrote for protection during the, the Congo crisis. He fought against colonialism and found an alliance with the Soviet Union which is believed to be the reason the West Allies refused to help him. Okay, but you don't get into all that, but you know, you always, well, everybody always go, tries to go to the States first or go to the best deal, though, but they always shun them and push them off to, you know, to the, to the Soviet Union at the time. The woman transformed uh, the country in just, uh, in just three months in office, and he strongly advocated for a united Africa until his death by firing, by firing squad. He is uh, seen as one of the founding fathers of post-colonial Africa and a key advocate in the Pan-African movement. I should say this, he's right along with, with Thomas Angara up at, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in Burkina Faso, he used to be called Upper Volta, uh, a bunch of other people, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just terrible how these people are complicit in, in, in killing. Why do you always kill the good people? Well, you gotta ask that, you know, in this various, uh, we won't get into that. He wrote many letters during his time in prison to political leaders, friends, and family expressing his concern about the country's uh, situation and his hope for liberation. Below is his last letter to his wife, Pauline Lumumba, uh, in 1960, before he was assassinated. It starts off, my beloved companion, my beloved companion. I write you these words 
not knowing whether you will receive them. When, um, when, when you will receive them and whether I will still be alive when you uh, read them. Throughout my struggle for the independence of my country, I have never doubted for a single instant that the sacred cause to which my comrades and I have dedicated our entire lives would triumph in the end. But what we, uh, but what we have wanted for our country, that's right, for an honorable life to, uh, uh, to, to, per to perfect dignity, to, uh, to independence with no restrictions, was never wanted by Belgian colonialism and the Western allies who found direct and indirect intentional and unintentional support among certain high officials of the United Nations, that body to which we place all our trust when we call, uh, or when called for uh, and for help. They have corrupted some of our countrymen. They have brought others. They have uh, done their part to distort the truth and defile our independence. What else can I say? that whether dead or alive, free or in prison, or by order of the colonialists, it is not my person that is important. What is important is the Congo. Our poor people whose independence have uh, been turned into a cage with people looking at us from outside the bar, sometimes with charitable compassion, sometimes with glee and delight. But my faith will remain unshakable. I know and feel in my heart of heart, in my, in my very heart of hearts, that sooner or later, my people will rid themselves of, of all their enemies, foreign and domestic. That they will rise up as one to say no to the shame and degradation of colonialism and regain their dignity in the pure light of day. We are not alone, Africa, Asia, and the free and liberated peoples of every corner of the globe will ever remain at the side of the millions of Congolese who will not abandon the struggle until the day when there will be no more colonizers and no more of their mercenaries in our country. I want my children, whom I leave behind and perhaps will never see again, to hold that future of the Congo is, uh, is beautiful and that our country uh, uh, expects them as it expects every Congolese to fulfill the sacred task of rebuilding our independence, our sovereignty. For without justice, there is no dignity. Without independence, there is no free men. Neither brutal assaults, nor cruel mistreatments, nor torture has ever led me to beg for mercy. For I prefer to die with my head held high, unshakable faith, and the greatest confidence in the destiny of my country rather than live in slavery and contempt for sacred principles. History will one day have its say. It will not be the history taught in the United Nations, Washington, Paris, or Brussels, however, but the history taught in the countries that have rid themselves of colonialism and its puppets. Africa will write its own history and both North and South of the Sahara will be a, hi a history full of glory and dignity. Do not weep for me, my companion. I know that my country, now suffering so much, will be able to defend its independence and its freedom. Long live the Congo. Long live Africa. Patrice. That's very telling. And if you remember that every person that wanted to unite Africa to make a, whatever it is, has, has been eliminated from, from Patrice Mumata to Muammar Gaddafi. And at the hands of, at the hands, at the manipulations of people who, 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 who I suppose they want uh, they think that material things, they, they think that uh, yachts and planes and, 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 and beating on, on the downtrodden is their ticket to what? I, I don't know. Uh, but that's Patrice Lumumba. And uh, this is back from me, T from the Palace is taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>